Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 21 of the chapter Equilibrium. In the past few parts, we have been discussing the factors that affect equilibria. I told you about concentration, I told you about pressure and we discussed the effect of the addition of an inert gas at the time of an equilibrium. Let us now move to the next factor that is temperature. So what is the effect of temperature on equilibrium? Do you know that when we discuss the change in concentration, pressure and in order to change the pressure we change the volume. So whenever we change these, what was the value that was affected? It was QC that was affected and comparing the values of KC and QC, if QC was less than KC, we said the reaction would proceed in the forward direction and if QC was greater than KC, then reaction proceeded in the backward direction. <coughs> but when we cause a change in the temperature, instead of QC, it is the equilibrium constant that is KC itself is affected. Now how does temperature affect equilibrium. We know we've studied in thermodynamics that a reaction in which energy is absorbed or heat is absorbed is known as an endothermic reaction and a reaction in which heat is evolved is known as an exothermic reaction and in equilibrium we've studied that it's a reaction which proceeds in both directions. So if the reaction is exothermic in the forward direction it automatically becomes the opposite of it in the backward direction. So if it is exothermic in the forward direction, it becomes endothermic in the backward direction. So we say the change in concentration, pressure and volume causes a change in QC. But temperature change affects KC. It changes the value of equilibrium constant itself. And we know that this value or rather uh, it depends, this change, it depends on the value of delta H. And delta H we've studied in thermodynamics is the change in enthalpy and enthalpy is the amount of heat that is exchanged in the reaction. Now before I come to explaining this, let us take an example. You're feeling very hot and you want to really cool yourself down. So what do you do? We have a nice pool, you know, a swimming pool with cold, nice cold water. And there's another swimming pool with very hot water. Which one would you like to jump into in order to feel cool? You would jump into the swimming pool which has cold water because what is your aim? Your aim is to lose heat, to lose that amount of heat so that you feel cool. So you will jump into cold water. Natural instinct will tell you if I, if you were feeling hot and you jumped into hot water instead, what would happen? You would, would you start feeling cool or would you start feeling even warmer than what you were feeling? In the same way, if you're feeling very cold and I tell you, here's a hot water pool, why don't you just enter it, the heat of the water, it'll enter your body and you'll feel warm and nice and it'll, it'll be good. So you are, you want to absorb heat. You're feeling cold, you want to absorb heat. So which swimming pool will be desirable? The hot one or the cold one? The hot one. So when we say we desire heat, it means the reaction, if we take, talk in terms of chemical reactions, it's an endothermic reaction. A reaction that will be helped by absorbing energy. So we would take it to more energy, that is more heat. So if you give heat to an endothermic reaction, the reaction is happy because it wanted heat and you gave heat to it. And for an exothermic reaction, if you give heat to an exothermic reaction, it was already warm, it was trying to give away its heat and you're giving it more heat. Will it be favored or will it not be favored? It will not be favored. So when you give heat to an exothermic reaction, it, it does not accept that heat, it does not want that heat. In an equilibrium, when a reaction proceeds in both directions, one direction is exothermic, the other is endothermic. So when you give heat, which reaction would be happy? Endothermic reaction would be happy. So the, that side will start reacting, which is endothermic. 
So if it was exothermic in the forward direction and endothermic in the backward direction, if you provide heat to such a reaction, it will start pro proceeding in the backward direction. It's simple logic, you know. Exothermic, it wants to give out heat and it would not be happy if you give it heat. It will be happy if you lower the temperature. So exothermic reactions are favored by lowering of temperature and endothermic reactions need heat. So they are favored by increasing the temperature. Now let us look. Delta H gives you an idea of whether the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. Delta H is the amount of heat change that occurred. If it is negative means that much of heat was lost. The, the final heat is less than the initial heat. That is why it has a negative value. And delta H positive means that it has gained energy. So delta H is negative for an exothermic reaction. When will delta H be negative? When the reaction loses heat. So it is an exothermic reaction and delta H would be positive for an endothermic reaction. So now let us understand if you increase the temperature, what would happen? If you increase the temperature, the exothermic reaction will not take place. You are increasing the temperature. So which reaction is favored? The endothermic reaction is favored. So if you increase the temperature for an exothermic reaction, the reaction should start proceeding in the backward direction. So if you look at the equilibrium constant, it was exothermic in the forward direction, but as soon as you provided heat, the backward reaction started, uh, was faster. Why? Because the backward reaction is favored by increase of temperature, because the backward reaction is endothermic in nature. So as a result, if the backward reaction is favored, the concentration of the reactants will increase. And in Kc, the reactants are in the denominator and the products are in the numerator. So when for an exothermic reaction, you provide heat, the reaction starts proceeding in the backward direction, the concentration of the reactants increases, thereby resulting in a greater denominator and therefore the value of Kc decreases. So the value of Kc decreases if you, if you raise the temperature for an exothermic reaction in the forward direction. When we say exothermic, we mean only the forward direction and it automatically means the backward reaction is endothermic. But if the chemical equilibrium is established in a reaction which is endothermic in the forward direction, then if you, if you increase the temperature, then the endothermic direction will be favored. And in that case, let us assume that this was a positive value, which means the delta H was positive. Delta H positive means it was an endothermic reaction. If this was an endothermic reaction, <coughs> what would have happened? It would have favored the formation of ammonia. If it would have favored the formation of ammonia, the reaction would proceed in the forward direction. The concentration of the products is more. Therefore, the value of Kc goes up. So for when delta H is positive, the reaction is endothermic and you provide heat to it. The reaction, the K value of Kc increases. So for this particular reaction, that is nitrogen combining with hydrogen to give you ammonia, this is Haber's process. The value of delta H is minus 92.38 kilojoules per mole. Minus means it is an exothermic reaction. So for an exothermic reaction, if you raise the temperature, if you raise the temperature, the reaction proceeds in the backward direction because it favors the endothermic reaction. And if you decrease the temperature, the reaction proceeds in the forward direction because that favors the exothermic process. There's an experiment that we can do to really see this in color in front of us. And that experiment, effect of temperature, an experiment that is explained in the textbook. You have NO2 gas, which dimerizes to give you N2O4. And this reaction is also exothermic because it has a negative value. Delta H is minus 57.2 kilojoules per mole, which means it's an exothermic reaction. And the color of NO2 is brown. While when it dimerizes, it forms N2O4, which is colorless. So if the reaction is proceeding in the forward direction, the brown color will become lighter and lighter. And if the color, uh, if it is running in the backward direction, it will become darker and darker brown. So what do we do to see the effect of temperature that is raising the temperature and decreasing the temperature? 
we take three beakers with water at three different temperatures. We have a freezing mixture in which we have ice and water mixed at, or rather ice at 270 Kelvin because at 273 Kelvin it is, um, it is 0 degrees Celsius and you have ice. So we have ice at minus 3 degrees Celsius or 270 Kelvin, really freezing mixture. And we have water at room temperature in one beaker and we have water at 363 Kelvin which is warm, really warm at uh, 363 Kelvin also. So we have water at three temperatures. Here we have freezing mixture that is ice. And now we have two test tubes ha which are sealed in which we have NO2 gas. And we take NO2 gas and we put them, put the two test tubes in this beaker which has water at room temperature. Both of them, the reaction is uh, at equilibrium at all temperatures. So it will establish equilibrium at that temperature and the brown color will become constant, whatever color, whatever amount of NO2 was left behind, that brown will remain in both the test tubes. So we have these two test tubes. So now what do we do? We have one beaker which has higher temperature, one beaker which has lower temperature. We take the two test tubes and we put them in these other two beakers. In one test tube, now both of them had the same brown color, but when you put it in a, in a beaker with lower temperature and you put it in a beaker with higher temperature, the equilibrium is disturbed. And according to Lee Shatler's principle, the, when the equilibrium is disturbed, the reaction tries to re-establish that equilibrium. And the Kc will change in this case. So what will happen? Since it is an exothermic reaction, it, the, if you increase the temperature, the backward reaction will be favored. And if you decrease the temperature, the forward reaction will be uh, favored. So in this case, we have decreased the temperature. So the forward reaction is favored and therefore the brown color, it becomes lighter. And in this beaker, the temperature has increased. It means it is favoring the backward reaction. And therefore, the brown color in the test tube, in this test tube, will become darker. So by looking at the color itself, you get an evidence about what, how would temperature affect the uh, chemical equilibrium. Here is an example of a reaction which is endothermic in the forward direction. So this reaction is endothermic in the forward direction. Obviously, it is exothermic in the backward direction. Let's see how does temperature affect. And this is also, since there are, there's a difference in colors of the ions, therefore you can see it visibly. The, you can see the effect of temperature visibly. You have cobalt hexahydrate ion and reacting with chloride ions to form cobalt tetrachloride ion. And cobalt hexahydrate is pink in color while cobalt tetrachloride is blue in color. Now when you have uh, these two ions the, and the reaction in the forward direction is endothermic. It is endothermic in the forward reaction, uh, direction. So if you increase the temperature, the forward reaction will be favored. So the pink color will become lighter or it will uh, it'll turn into blue. And in the backward direction, it is uh, exothermic. Therefore, if you decrease the temperature, if you decrease the temperature, the reaction proceeds in the backward direction and blue turns into pink. So this is how we have, uh, you know, these experiments where you can visibly see changes in color uh, based on the raising or decreasing of temperature. So this was the effect of temperature on equilibrium. And now we are left with just one more um, factor that affects equilibrium, that is catalyst. And we'll do that in the next video. If you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.